That's the raw cut there. Okay. And then we label the end so that we remember where it came from and what batch because these ends get reused. You can kind of pretty up this end here a little bit. step is the reaming. And for that basically we're cutting the inside of the rough casting so that you end up with the proper taper to fit the Edison mandrel. So that's looking like it's going to have to be reamed to move about an inch or 15 16 of an inch and each reaming takes about a sixteenth of an inch, so this one's going to have to be reamed about fourteen or fifteen times, probably. We ream in sets of four. And this is dirty sandpaper from the last time I reamed. So first that's got to be clean. pieces of sandpaper. For the end of the cylinder here getting over close to the end of this and when it's about maybe half an inch away from the end with the sandpaper on there that's about the time that it's going to fit that Edison mandrel the way it's supposed to and this is going to take quite a few less reamings than I thought at the beginning there because this is going much better okay so here's the four that I signed up for all cleaned off here and check the fit. So it's sticking over past there about three sixteenths of an inch and it needs to be seven sixteenths so we got four more sixteenths to go so that would be about four more reamings and that's going to be getting pretty close there. It's about three eighths there, so time to go check it. Here is a finished cylinder, and we're going to show the finished reaming gets you over within about a sixteenth of the end. Actually, this one's a little tight, and there's a little bit more of a gap there than there would normally be at the very beginning. And this one shows that we need to ream enough to move this over about. Looks like about three thirty seconds of an inch going over where it doesn't need to be on a hot day then. So we're probably probably this will be the last one or next to the last one. Okay, it's a much better angle on here, you mean. And what you watch for is with the cylinder on this mandrel with the sandpaper. You look for this gap here to close up to about a half an inch and once that's a half inch then without the sandpaper it's going to stick clear off there about seven sixteenths and when you got it like that then you go over on the Edison and push it on there and it lines up exactly with the end of that mandrel. And we started out with the gap to the end of the Edison mandrel being about three thirty seconds and we took one more reaming and now it's it's dead even with the left end of the Edison mandrel and the temperature up here is about 75 
and that is safe because when it's about 95 it'll be kind of hanging off the end a little further and you don't want to have the cylinder crashing into the bearing block if you can help it. So right now we're looking for the high spot. There it is. And check the middle and the other end. Oop. That right end is higher than the left end, so you have to be real careful. Okay, so now that we've identified all those places, fire it up and take a pass. Probably better than most of them. And each 45 degrees of that adjuster wheel cranks that thing in three thousandths of an inch. There, now it's biting in pretty good. Looks like a pretty continuous cut, so we're getting pretty close to the first good surface here. Okay, there's just a little bit of rough casting still showing, through. maybe a little more, but you don't want to go too far because then if you go too far, you've just wasted part of your recording surface. is good enough for testing. So now we'll do the finish cuts. Let's go and take that same cut twice more. And you wouldn't think it would, but there's stuff coming off of there, see? Okay, this will be the surface noise test of uh, Blank number M191, and we are at a diameter of 2.187. And this will be the first time that any sound has come out of this blank. This is the surface noise test now. And we're going to play the whole two and a half minutes, listening for any irregularities, any surface noise, any rotary noise, anything. Tiny bit of rotary noise, hear that? Very faint. And that tends to go away as you cut deeper in, so probably at the next surface and the next and the next after that, it'll get better. Friday, August 10th, being recorded at on blank, blank number M191 at a diameter of 2.187 inches using recorder number 110543 and the 3 inch by 29 inch manila cardboard folder recording horn with no cotton ball between the carriage arm and the record. Now using recorder number 363990 and it's the one with the dull cutter and so you'll see it cutting those fine powdery shavings. Here's a short recording test now using recorder number 232738 and it is the one that has the flat chisel point stylus made by expert in England or the United Kingdom as it is now called. Okay, okay this will be the complete set of five recording tests on blank number M191. Here goes. Friday, August 10th being recorded at on blank number M191 at a diameter of 2.187 inches using recorder number 110543 and the 3 inch by 29 inch manila cardboard folder recording horn with no cotton ball between the carriage arm and the record. Now testing using recorder 413454 of 
otherwise known as the loud talking recorder, and it has its own built-in .019 inch thick wire ring spacer. Here is a short recording test now being done with recorder number 377-506 and I think it's probably the best of my five recorders right now and lately it's been turning in some very quiet cuts. There, pretty quiet, eh? Here is a short recording test now using recorder number 363-990, and it's the one with the dull cutter, and so you'll see it cutting those fine powdery shavings. Here's a short recording test now using recorder number 232-738, and it is the one that has the flat chisel point stylus made by experts in England or the United Kingdom, as it is now called.